Hey everybody, we're going to look at this really kind of simple yet seemingly complex way that logic records your MIDI information. So the issue is that logic really likes you to select your track that you're going to record into. Now, with a default setup, I can record into multiple. I just have to push the record button on, or the record arm on the second MIDI track. Let's record these. Now you'll see right off the bat, it doesn't look the same in both of them. That's because on the secondary non-focus track, it creates an alias, which links to the first one. This is actually super useful if you're doing layering and things, because what happens is that this alias refers back to the first one, and then I can move this around and what we end up having then is the ability to have all of them that are aliased off of that changed as well. At any time though, I can come through here and we can actually change this. So I can say convert alias to a copy and now it's its own MIDI file and they can be edited separately. So that's easiest way. Now, if you're recording, and you happen to record on your track. So I've got my record armed here, but I'm selected my, say I've got my audio track selected. And I'm still playing my MIDI keyboard, but my audio track is selected. I'm gonna push record. Nothing happens with my MIDI track. It's record armed but nothing happens. Now I see this pretty regularly where someone says, well, just do the capture recording. There's a key command you can assign to it, or you can come up here and customize your control bar. I already have it on there, capture recording. This allows you to push a button and anything that wasn't recorded, but that you played just last time would be added in. The problem is, is that it doesn't work in this case because push record instead of just play. So that capture recording, let's push play. Now I'm gonna capture recording. That actually would work because I was just playing, not recording. The capture recording is only when you play and not when you actually put it into record. Still quirky, it dumps it into my audio track instead of on my MIDI or instrument track, but at least it's there. But if you were recording and you had the audio track selected, then you're not gonna know that it wasn't there till after the fact, which leads me to one of the more important things if you're not used to working this way. And that's inside of our project settings. So this is a setting that's just per project, which means if you have 20 projects and you've already created them all, you have to go into each one of these and change it. So let's come in here. And what we're going to do is auto demix by channel if multi-track recording for MIDI. This means that if I have two or three different MIDI keyboards and they're all attached, I have to go to the keyboard and choose a MIDI channel that's different for each one. And then I can set the input MIDI on each of the channels. And then I can actually record three keyboards separately. Or in this case, I can record one keyboard and it will only play if that track is in focus. So for instance, now I have the polka accordion still record enabled, my audio track is selected, pushing keys on my MIDI keyboard and nothing happens. This is important because it is waiting for input from a keyboard that's on MIDI track one or MIDI channel one. If I go down here, now you can hear it. So this is like, in a way, idiot proofing your performances here. Now, if I do this with the second one, second one is record enabled before both of them would have played simultaneously, but now we're still just hearing the one in focus. Let's record. Even though the second one is record enabled, we're not getting any of the alias created or anything like that. I can still pretty easily just copy and paste that one down if I want to. But 
This is really a smart way to work if you're having issues with this. Because what happens is you no longer accidentally perform without recording. So if I'm up here, I've got the, my accordion record enabled, I push on the keyboard, you don't hear anything. And so you don't accidentally record something you can't hear. You're going to go, oh yeah, hold on. And you're going to go down and select and put that track in focus. So that's really all the options. Now, the thing you should be asking yourself is why in the world does it have to be like this? I, I don't know exactly. I feel like there's something about putting the track in focus that changes how logic handles the resources. I did a video about this uh, a week or so ago. Putting it in focus tells logic to send resources for performing that instrument. And so it doesn't like having to do that with tracks that aren't in focus. It doesn't like to have to record into them. That way it doesn't like to have to worry about timing and latency or compensation. And so this is the way that it manages its resources by making you put it in focus. If we were to change this, I feel like we'd have to change the whole engine of logic, which is not what I'm asking for. I'm not even really complaining about this because I've been using logic enough now over the years to know that if I want to record into a track, I just put it in focus, I do my recording, and then everything works great. I have had setups where I needed multiple keyboards, so I use it for that. But for anybody who's having issues with this, change that setting to have that multi-track setting enabled. That way you don't accidentally perform without recording by having the wrong track in focus. Okay, hope this video is helpful in understanding a little bit of how this works and seeing some of your options. Hope you're having a great week. More videos coming soon.